Thanks be to God. <laughs> well, good morning, friends. My name is Jordan Sikas, and I am one of the pastors here at First Methodist Houston. If this is your first time here, or if you're a returning guest or member, I am delighted to be worshiping the living God with you all this morning. Well, we're going to start with a word of prayer, if you'll pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. And if these things do not please you, Lord, may they fall to the floor and never be spoken of again. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, amen. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. These were the words that beckoned the hall of Duke Divinity School as I walked in every single day, and I always wondered about them. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What transforms our mind? Who transforms our mind? These are often questions I find we ask ourselves, and there are logical, tangible, earthly ways in which we understand that our minds are transformed. Our minds are transformed through reading books, through discussing, through contemplation, through pondering scripture. Um, our minds can even be transformed by television. But the one thing that strings throughout all of the things that might transform our minds, and the one thing that I think keeps consistent between who we are and our practices, are things and people who were created by God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. These words do come from a book Paul wrote. They come from the book of Romans. And although we don't find them in the book of Corinthians, um, we know that it is a theme throughout all of Pauline scripture that transformation is deeply important to the gospel. It's deeply important to understanding who God is. And transformation is not like a one and done sort of deal as Paul talks about it, but rather Paul talks about transformation as something that is led to, from evolving and growing. And I have sort of pondered before, how do we evolve? How do we transform? Well, we evolve and transform by being people who read books by being people who discuss, by being people who contemplate, by being people who look to scripture, and by being people who enjoy watching TV. And all of these things, um, not necessarily all of the time, but all of these things have a center, and that center is people, and those people are representative of God's creative power. God's creative power is represented in all things that we experience and do as humans. And in fact, God's creative power is just at the core of who we are as human beings. We transform, as Paul says, we evolve because God leads us to do just that. And God does this through God's essence, God's essence being triune, meaning that we believe that there is a Godhead Father, there is a Son, and there is a Holy Spirit. Now, in church and in life, I think we often ponder who God is and wh where Christ was and how we're called to act as Christ, and we are also called to think about how we're embodying Christ, right? Right? So in the midst of that, if we're thinking about the Godhead and the Son, we're also called to think of where the Holy Spirit is in part of our transformation. And as we talk about transformation, as we talk about our new sermon series, The Gray, and learning about navigating hard spaces, it is impossible to separate that from separating discussion about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's act in our lives and the Holy Spirit's power to transform us. God's provision and God's love, God's essence, transforms us constantly because of the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit above, the Spirit below, and the Spirit that is within all things and all people. She transforms us and leads us if we seek to be led, to be people who demonstrate God's grace to the world. We are transformed by God and the understanding through the prophets and Christ's 
life and death and resurrection, and we are transformed by the consistent movement and outpouring of God's Spirit on the earth from the beginning of time to now. The power and work of the Holy Spirit is something that is essential to our lives, and it is something that we cannot function without as followers of God. We cannot exist without the Spirit's guidance. So when Paul says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, I want us to think about it a little bit differently. I'm going to add the words, be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the whole phrase is, be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit for the renewing of your mind. Look, Paul did get it right initially, but we can elaborate a little on what the scripture means. Today, we're in the second epistle to the Corinthians, where Paul is addressing the people of Corinth, the people for whom were very messy, the people who probably irritated Paul because they got three letters that we know historically. So we know the Corinthians need a lot of transformation. (laughs) And Paul starts this section with a line that I think is both phenomenal and simple in the NIV translation. Paul starts the section the saying, we have hope, we are bold. We have hope and we are bold. Well, if I could talk to Paul today, I would say we're probably a little messy too. But all of this leads back to the Holy Spirit because our hope comes from who? What's the answer? God. Okay, y'all are not, that's fine. Um, So our hope comes from God or some variation of that. And it's a hope that is not of this earth. It is a hope that only exists in faith of true goodness, and it is a hope that is revealed again and again by the Holy Spirit. This is the hope that Paul is talking about. Paul also says we are bold. Now, we're not the kind of bold that makes us come off as jerks as much as we want to be sometimes, and there were just as many jerks in Corinth as there are on Interstate 45 at any given time, as you all are aware, but we're not called to be that kind of bold. (laughs) but a kind of boldness in that we're supposed to have, a kind of boldness that is reliant on the essence of hope, the essence of God's spirit, the essence of God's love, boldness that expresses God's divine love for all creation, boldness embodied by the hope, the hope that is only revealed to us and transforming us by the spirit, which is a part of who God is. So all of this is linked. The Spirit gives us hope and embodies us and emboldens us to be people who transform the world. What we have and who we are and what we do as faithful followers of the living God is unveiled to us and transforming us constantly through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is because of the grace of God that exists in our lives before we even recognize it. And if we allow it, if we see the essence of God's love in our lives, if we allow that to transform us, we continue to acknowledge the hope and love of Christ through the Spirit throughout all of our lifetimes. We, as people of God, talk about God pretty consistently, I would say, but to some extent, we have to grab hold of our faith, grab hold of the spirit that we see, and we have to allow it to transform us and transform our lives so that we might illuminate the world. When we recognize the grace and hope and spirit that we've received, um, we are enlightened to who God is. And because of that, we have to act on it. We can't just hold on to the spirit that we recognize within us, but we have to act on whatever is going on, no matter where we are in our earthly plans. If you recognize the spirit as a deep believer in the Jesus thing, or if you recognize the essence of the spirit as a hopeful skeptic, or somewhere in between, there is still reliance and dependence on the hope and love of Jesus Christ through the Spirit of God. In whatever spaces we're in and whatever spaces we're called to be in, we are also called to take heart and take hold of the goodness that we recognize in the world, the goodness that is only given to us through the deep love of the Holy Spirit. 
from an inkling of hope to deep assurance of the divinity, we have to take hold of the Spirit in our lives. Where is the Spirit at work in your life? Where are you getting inklings of hope? In all of the feelings that we have, in all of the understandings of hope, and all of the understandings of grace and love, we recognize, as Paul was talking about, we recognize that God becomes more unveiled to us. This causes our mindset about goodness to change, our desires for peace and love to change. This causes us to transform from the inside so that we might become a better people to love and serve the Lord. Be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit for the renewing of your mind. And transformation through revelation and illumination, as I said earlier, is not an overnight sort of deal. It's not something that can just happen one and done. It requires a slow effort of growing to understand God. It requires discomfort. It requires digging in a little bit of who God is and where we see the Spirit of God in the world. Growing in God means transforming the way we think, the way we feel, and transforming our actions so that the world is cared for. Where are we transforming our actions today so that the world is loved, so that people recognize that they are loved, so that humans see the true love, the true love that comes from the powers of peace, hope, and joy, not from any power on this earth. Whenever Paul talks about this in our scripture, he says that humanity is in the act of being transformed. We are in action with God and constantly learning and constantly evolving. Corinth was in the act of being transformed in such a way that honored diversity while uniting under the same God that binds us together. Corinth, this city that was filled with extreme poverty and extreme wealth, Corinth, the same city that had a multitude of faith backgrounds, Paul knew that God could unite this city, this city of Corinth, while honoring diversity, while loving others in Corinth because of the transformation of Jesus Christ. But this only happens in Corinth if the Corinthians believed and God's transformative powers. And like that, like the city of Corinth, we live in the city of Houston, filled with extreme poverty and extreme wealth, a city with a multitude of faith backgrounds, a city with a multitude of political ideals, a city near a port, much like Corinth, a city filled with tension towards one another, and yet, When something devastating happens, the spirit moves in the city of Houston, right? The people of the city of Houston unite and love and help one another over and over again. And that is the spirit working through people. That is the spirit working through unity, working through showing hope and being bold in our action. And that gives us very glimmers of the God we believe in. We are called by God to believe in the act of working towards God. As Paul says, we are called to work towards perfection, work toward the goodness that God has given through the love of God, through the love of the divine. And that work that we have, the work we're called to, the work that is embodied by the Holy Spirit, it's how we grow. It's how we grow personally, and it is how we grow to express God's love to the world. God is omnipotent, meaning that God never changes, and yet we experience new revelations about God every single day, and those new revelations come from the power of the Holy Spirit. They come from the Spirit speaking to us, the Spirit teaching us and leading us in ways that we might not understand, and the Spirit works. The Spirit works in transformation, transformation of our personal selves, of our inner selves, of working through what we might be going on with inside of us. And the Spirit also works in tandem with us to the rest of the world. The problem, though, is that 
when the spirit works, we can resist it. We can, we can res resist her change, resist her power. And because of that, if we resist the movement of the spirit, if we say, no, we're not going to learn about the spirit today, we will never transform. If we do not acknowledge the spirit's act within all of creation and all of our lives and all of our abilities, then we will never be a transformative people for the goodness of God. God will always work, as I have said in sermons past, God will always work in spite of our human failures and sometimes in spite of all of our actions. But, but we have the power to see the Spirit of God, to recognize the Spirit of God, to recognize God's grace and use that for the movement of God, for the transformation of the world we are a part as a Christian community of demonstrating God's grace. God's spirit uses us to demonstrate God's love, to demonstrate God's peace. And this is all in partnership with the spirit of the Lord. And this action, the action of resisting pain and suffering and violence and destruction and working with the spirit of the world or the spirit of the Lord, that is very important to the gospel of God. The movement of the spirit transforms our humanity and makes us people who deliver the good news, makes us people who receive others in grace and love instead of being people who ignore one another. And God assures us through scripture that the spirit of the Lord is everywhere. The spirit of the Lord is present with and in transformation. And God's goodness is revealed increasingly. And God's goodness and grace is, keeps growing in glory. And we have a call. And we have to heed the call of listening to that of being in partnership with the Holy Spirit so that we can transform lives, so that we can get to know one another, so that we can demonstrate God's goodness in the world. Be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit for the renewing of your mind. The Spirit of the Lord God is present in this room. The Spirit of the Lord God is also present on the streets where people live and on the streets where people protest. God's presence and God's Spirit is present in living rooms. God's presence is at NIA. God's presence is at breweries sometimes. God's presence is near water and on mountains. God's Spirit is in every conversation. It is in everything that we do. So who are we to say that the Spirit doesn't exist? We can't do that. We have to be people who cling to the Spirit, who say yes to the Spirit, the people who listen to the guiding call and transformative power of the spirit because God is already moving in the rest of the spaces and we are supposed to be people in those spaces transforming and loving other people. The spirit of the Lord <laughs> transforms the darkest rooms and the brightest ones. And the spirit of the Lord is wisdom, discernment, mercy, justice, and truth, and so many other things. And where can you in your lives recognize mercy, discernment, justice, truth, hope, love. I know it's in your lives somewhere. And because of that, I want you to think that is where the spirit is, where the spirit of the Lord is, we are also. And as our scripture says, the spirit of the Lord is calling us. It is summoning us to act boldly and hopefully in whatever space we may encounter and whoever we may encounter because we rest fully in the assurance of that good, good revelation of God that we have been given. If we recognize the Spirit in something or someone, we are called by God, as Paul says, to be unveiled, to be bold, to be emboldened, to love others and love kindly and justly. If we believe in the Spirit, and we believe that the Spirit is ushering us and leading us, and we do believe that, right, then there are places where we are called to go. This last week, we had Where Are We Wednesdays, in which it was so delightful and so fun, and I hope you guys join us for the next Where Are We Wednesday on Ash Wednesday. And you know, as a pastor, I generally like to think about 
the kind of conversations I'm going to have and think through how they might go. And the conversation went absolutely how I did not expect it to go. Um, it did not go through any of the questions that I had thought I was going to ask. We barely talked about the scripture I wanted to talk about. But through the transformative power of vulnerability and honesty, nine perfect strangers were able to be united and share experiences that help us grow, that help us know that we were not alone. And that was the beauty of the Holy Spirit in that space. And I was not expecting it, but oftentimes when the Spirit comes into our lives, when the Spirit comes into the spaces where we are, we don't expect the Spirit to be where she is, but rather she comes in and in, in, emboldens us and teaches us how to be hopeful in a different way that we ever expected and teaches us how to be loving in a way that we never expected. Time and time again, I see spaces where people come where we might not think to talk to one another and there is transformative power of the Holy Spirit in those spaces. Places where we find awe and wonder and unity in God's creation. That is where the Spirit is. The Spirit comes into all spaces that can be mundane and disappointing. And the Spirit also comes into spaces that can be angry. And spaces that are loving and everything in between. And the, and the Spirit transforms them. The Spirit transforms our lives and who we are and all of the places that we're in. So that God's grace is known. So that God's love is known. And that is something we get to be a part of. Not because of what we do, but just because of who we are and the fact that God God created us, and God wanted to be in relationship with us. The spaces where we are called to be are here and now, and they might not be things that you would think to go to, but I recommend you do because that is where the Spirit of the Lord is. The Spirit of the Lord is in the hard things. It is in the things that we don't understand because if we don't understand them now, we pray to the good Lord above that the Spirit might have a revelation and unveiling of understanding. We believe that God is in all spaces and all people. And because of that, we believe in the transformative power of the Holy Spirit in all of those spaces and in all of those people. Amen? And one of the places we come consistently to to transform us, to work through us, is the space of the Holy Table. The power of the Holy Spirit in union with Jesus Christ and emboldened in action from God is where we come consistently over and over again, knowing that the Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is in the elements to transform us so that we might go into the world a more hopeful and emboldened people. We believe as faithful followers that the communion table is a sign of God's grace that can heal and transform from the inside so that we might heal and transform the outer world. Communion, therefore, is an essence of God through the power of the Holy Spirit and is a true gift given to us so that we might understand God's spirit in our lives more. Now, as United Methodists, we believe in an open table. We do not believe that this is a Methodist table. This is the Lord's table. And the Lord is in this place, God. And the Lord is with us with communion. Um, we will be taking of K-cup communion, as I like to call it, because we spread God's grace, not germs. Amen. <laughs> So um, I hope you have your communion cup ready. But on the night in which Jesus was in a space where the spirit was, but where pain was also, Jesus took the loaf of bread. He gave thanks to all of his friends who were embodied by the spirit in that time. He gave thanks and said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this and remember me. Likewise, after the supper, Jesus took a cup, a cup emboldened by God's transformative powers and said, take and drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for forgiveness of sins. Drink this and remember me. Will you pray with me, friends? 
Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit within your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This, are we going to take the wafer? This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Will you pray with me, friends? God, we are so thankful for the ways in which you have come into our lives and transformed us. God, lead us to be people who are emboldened and hopeful in you, that are people who um, are embodied by your spirit so that we might transform the world. We thank you for today, and we thank you for all of the ways in which you are already showing up, God. And God, lead us to be people who show up to those places. It is in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray all of this. Amen.